Welcome to Community Updates, brought to you by the Oravana Project at oravana.com. Greetings, my name is Travis. I'm a contributor to the Oravana Project. In order to more greatly clarify what we mean by the word community, it may be useful to provide some additional contrast between that which is and is not community. Through the following discussion, the fundamental structuring of community should come more greatly into view and be seen outlined against the backdrop of the often confusing and highly divisionary structuring of modern society. The Oravana Project exists in part to co-create the emergence of a socioeconomic structure that facilitates a world where we live in harmony with each other and in balance with the earth. This is a structure that maintains our desired fulfillment as we develop toward a higher potential dynamic of life experience for ourselves and all others. The result of our integrations and effort applied toward this goal is a series of design specifications to be used in the construction, operation, and continued evolution of that which we refer to as community. Consider the following. When you are out walking in nature as an intelligent individual who has explored its universe as much as we have been able to, does that nature communicate to you a design? Through the testing of our experience of events in the probabilistic world, we can come to see its organization, its patterning, and one is left with the idea that there is an architecture to our experience of this universe. If there is, then we can use evidence as that which enables or otherwise facilitates the experience of truth by the mind to iteratively test our living designs, our common information model for our well-being, and adapt it to one of greater fulfillment as we receive and integrate feedback from our environment. Hence, the information model that we represent as community can function for a population of a hundred or more, or potentially even the given population of this planet. It is capable of doing this because it models the world as it is, and it uses that model as a basis for understanding why certain structures and actions are more likely to lead to greater social and ecological stability and to a higher potential of fulfillment and well-being, and other structures, less stability and a lesser potential. In community, we recognize that some structures repress human fulfillment and encode values that orient in that direction. Other structures, we have evidenced, facilitate the highest expression of human fulfillment and encode values aligned with that direction. We know, scientifically speaking, as well as through wisdom passed down from our ancestors, that we need certain types of environment to develop our full potentials, to develop fully. And in this sense, a community is a group of people who have gathered together to facilitate environmental change toward one of greater developmental fulfillment for all, versus a business which is a group of people with a shared set of relationships who have gathered together in part to create a product or service for a profit, or the state, which is a group of people who have gathered together in part to control and redistribute wealth and to punish violators of their rules. Notice the difference in intention. The structuring of community represents the sustainment of a more fulfilling way of life, where human needs, not rights or profits, are recognized and sufficiently fulfilled. The interests of organisms are different than the interests of businesses and states. Think about that for a moment. What if neither price nor authority were variables in the construction and continued operation of our living system? Someone with a modern societal worldview might imagine that life would be pretty chaotic, or not think it possible. But what if we had an open, adaptive, and unified information model with an explicitly beneficial direction for all that we could use to cooperatively, synergistically, and iteratively coordinate our lives together on this finite planet? Life might look pretty different. Imagine a living environment in which the predictability of science and wisdom of our past are combined into an ever-evolving structure designed by us, for us, and in consideration of all of us. It seems like that is something desirable for everyone, and by construction, is something that works for everyone. Let's now provide some rudimentary initial definitions to heighten the contrast. Modern society is composed of a large group of people that live over an extensive area, compete against one another for the common resources, experience inequality and wealth disparity between social classes and or genders, cannot operate through a unified decision process due to dissimilar understandings and goals. Instead, decision-making is by authority, majority, or minority rule, and the actions that are taken often benefit a small segment of the people at the expense of others and the ecology. Community is composed of a group of people with a shared sense of purpose who live within the regenerative, caring capacity of their environment, 
cooperate with one another using common resources, experience an enriched life where there are a multitude of opportunities for self-growth and contribution, operate through a unified decision process due to similar understandings and goals, and actions that are taken often benefit everyone and do not come at the expense of anyone or the ecology. In order to achieve this in community, we intentionally design our constructed environment to meet human needs, wherein our well-being and the well-being of our ecology is a priority. We are powerful human beings here on Earth, and the actions we take determine the state of the planet. Hence, when we expend energy, we ask, are these efforts that we are expending resulting in an improved design for the well-being of everyone while accounting for the larger environment? If not, then we pause those efforts and take a breath to reflect on whether our current way of thinking may be leaving better outcomes behind. We have a common saying, never be so sure of what you want that you wouldn't take something better. In order to create something that works for everyone, we have to have an understanding that to a large degree, we reflect our environment. If we want to share this planet with the type of person who is cooperative, constructive, and creative, then we have to maintain an awareness of our environment and continuously to redesign our constructions within it to ensure the expression of those values we want to see reflectively expressed by others. Conversely, modern society is structured based upon a centuries-old value set primarily oriented toward competition, consumption, market-based wealth, and greater authority over others, and hence the goals of most people in modern society are constructed around property, profit, and power. One could go so far as to say that the environment that modern society creates is a distortion of human, humane values due to its verifiable orientation away from the fulfillment of human need and an accurate accounting for the environment both of which become external to the awareness and decisioning of those sharing its values. Some systems, due to their structural orientation, are inherently unstable and cannot meet the full spectrum of human needs, let alone facilitate a recognition of their existence. Instead of being defined by artificially imposed limitations, community is engagement with an openly shared model of factually reasoned socioeconomic and ecological stability that uses an emergent understanding of nature as a template to generate an abundance of experienced fulfillment for all. Importantly, community not only produces the right kind of abundance, but it requires an abundance of understanding in the individuals that are participating. Once we start unraveling our experience with this new awareness of what community means, we start to question everything about the nature of the society we have structured around us. That means questioning not just the actions of something, such as a leader, the market, the state, or a democracy, for example, but the very idea of that thing, the very idea of a leader, the market, the state, or even a community. Modern society is built upon institutions, including those of an ideological, economic, and regulatory form, that do not, and worse even, cannot properly account for the features of healthy living systems. Therein, regardless of individual intentions, it is not possible for decisioning to account for all information relevant to human fulfillment. The socioeconomic structure simply will not allow for it. As such, modern society, with its innumerable institutions, is reaching the end of its viability. The choice we have now, perhaps the only viable option, is to create new structures with what we now understand is the way nature, the universe, creates healthy and sustainable systems. The question then arises, what does this idea of community actually mean to us today? It means the discarding of old, outdated beliefs and structures. It means recognizing that community is not the same as other assemblages of persons. To construct community, we have to let go of our attachments to all isms, including the modern-day isms of capitalism, socialism, communism, centralism, and decentralism, as well as the other socially divisionary left and right isms. Instead, we observe the world for what it is, we look at how we can construct in alignment with our understandings of nature, and then we select the optimal reconfiguration of our environment oriented toward everyone's well-being. This up-to-date understanding of community also means that we are going to dramatically change the nature of how we experience our daily life on this planet, for the betterment of everyone, so that our species may have a long-term and optimistic future. Our life together in community is going to be amazing. We just need to change the way we think and behave and the information we put out there as quickly as possible based upon our new understandings. Constructively speaking, we can put the pieces of our environment together in different ways, wherein our intentions direct our creations toward an integrated evolution of our way of living and our fulfillment. 
Here, the faster we can acknowledge and adapt the structure of our living system to that which is actually happening, given a direction of survival and flourishing, the more resilient a structure it is. A structure that can organize more complexity with more capacity to adapt is more evolved. When a society is built upon a structure of belief, and hence not sufficiently open to the emergence of new evidence, then that society will have a difficult time adapting to new information. And so, community is not ever established, unlike an institution or some other possible socioeconomic arrangement that has been fixed to past values and beliefs. An established organization, an institution, generally prefers to maintain its structural power base by inhibiting socioeconomic changes that have the potential to disrupt that base structure. Notice how institutions are normalized in modern society. And then consider how that normalization affects our psychological willingness to adopt socioeconomic advancements in our understandings, our creations, and ultimately our fulfillment. Community is living with dynamic complexity while maintaining a comprehensive understanding of the nature, origin, of that complexity. Modern society is living so out of alignment with its biology that it is literally degenerating <laughs> and then pretending that it doesn't notice. Here, we might take pause to consider the relationship between belief and how a society structures itself. If we believe that the price of something affects quality, then we may spend more money on a higher quality product. If, for example, we desire better audio in the market economy, then we would spend more money on a higher quality audio product. But for us among community, price has no relationship to what we hear. And that realization of a direct experience opens us up to do our own research and investigation, our own self-organization, and our own work toward what is possible. Community is possible today. It is possible to have a network of sustainable city systems where we have intelligently organized free access to that which we need so that we may thrive, in contrast to an unstable living arrangement where we exchange artificial intangibles that everyone is coerced into acquiring and using for at least their mere survival, generating socioeconomic inequality and the vast number of public health issues that are causal consequences therefrom. One could go so far as to say that the economy of community is based upon direct access to the source of one's fulfillment, and hence, it is driven by the synergy of individuals who are cooperating for their fulfillment through a unified information space. In a scarcity-driven economy, goods and services have a value abstracted from human fulfillment. In general, this value is known as monetary value, or price, and it is based to some relative degree on the scarcity of that which is considered of value. Now, one might stop to question the purpose and validity of putting a price on nature, or human fulfillment, or ecosystems, or any organism at all. When did the bees last send you an invoice for pollination? Of course nature has value to us. It's just that it's not a market price value. Instead, it is the value of a direct experience of connection that market-biased artificial intangibles end up obscuring. Therein, most people brought up in such a society have been conditioned to want to live in scarcity and promote its values, one of which is socioeconomic competition, for example. Modern society, in part, maintains scarcity in order to maintain the market and the state, while perpetuating the systems that keep those in power with power. There is an inherent power in having resources that others don't have, but need or want. In community, however, through the use of an open information model that structures the flow of common resources, as well as automation and other appropriate technological applications, we can produce abundance without the abuse of resources and establishment of power structures. We share resources and apply them intelligently so that we co-create and maintain an abundance of fulfillment instead of scarcity for everyone on Earth. We know that when there is scarcity in our fulfillment, then there will be institutions of war and segments of the population in poverty. If we desire to live among community, then we have to move beyond competition over resources, work for income, exchange for production, and punishment for incentive, and hence the compromising of our fulfillment which means we have to recognize that true wealth is a healthy human in a healthy ecology. It's not a revolution. It's a recognition of the evolutionary process of humanity that we share resources freely without exchange for the sustainment of our fulfillment. It is not about who is getting what from whom. It is about all of us collaborating for at least our own individual sake, which we recognize as existing in a consequential relationship with a larger social and ecological presence. It has been said before, and bears reiterating, that we are presently a young species, trapped in prejudices and strange hurtful beliefs, dominated by unconscious forces, 
and guided blindly by energies we do not understand and have no control over. But we can start from humble beginnings to shape our creations in ways that are of benefit to all. If we work together, we can step out of an environment where we are less than our true potential. In community, we understand and account for socioeconomically triggered causality. Hence, our lifestyle is the result of our integral connections forming conceptual and material structures around which we live our lives in a peak state of fulfillment. And so, instead of reacting to the suffering and confusion out in the world with anger, we take pause to think and orient towards solutions with a meaningful and long-term vision. We design a new model to make the old, less fulfilling model obsolete. And this necessitates that we, instead of looking solely at the behaviors of others, we look at how our own behavior and environmental constructions might be contributing to the behavior of others. And by understanding the complex dynamic of relationships at play, we can direct our lifestyles toward one of greater fulfillment. Community is a thoughtful creation. In modern society, there are many people who lack any consciousness about issues and knowledge that should be central to all of our consciousness. They live in a world of illusion crafted by unseen structures and obscure figures. So many of the concerns that occupy the minds and the tasks that fill the calendars of those in modern society arise from unconsciously implanted impulses to become someone or something that they are not. This is no accident, as they are, and I shall use a strong word here, indoctrinated from a young age into the authoritarian, corporate consumer culture that now dominates the human race. They are assimilated into a collective mentality that espouses untouchable truths and promotes particular ways of being and behaving as required to succeed in their world. And in this context, the word succeed means to supplant and replace others along a socioeconomic hierarchy. At present, the vast majority of people on our planet are too overwhelmed, too complacent, or too cognitively impaired to peer behind the crafted veil and explore the deeper structure. Take, for example, the people in modern society who say, I don't need community. I prefer living and being alone. Of course, they don't actually exist alone. They are in fact highly dependent on a very transient network of growers and producers and manufacturers who do most, if not all, of the things that they need. And they do these things generally, out of their sight, and not always done in ways that are in their best interest. These people who think, I don't need community, are actually living a life with very tenuous connections. They are tenuous connections because as soon as they stop working, for example, they lose the connection with their employer. As soon as they stop paying the shopkeeper, the shopkeeper no longer wants them. As soon as they stop filing tax returns, in other words, paying their taxes, the government becomes aggressive toward them. The people who say, I don't need community, I can live alone, have exchanged deep and strong connections for a transient set of economic connections that are so fragile that as soon as anything happens to them, all of the people who did what they need abandon them. The meaning and role they have in the lives of others is based around money, property, and profit. To some degree, community is simply a reemergence of that which was, quite literally, occulted from us long ago. It is a bit like the modern rediscovery that food could be medicine. Did you know that food could have medicinal qualities? Yes, this has been known for quite a while. Today in modern society, we can't escape the fact that right now, we live in a capitalist system. It surrounds and permeates us. Most, if not all of the things that we need to survive, have a price tag on them. Life has been that way for you, possibly since birth. And so, we just unconsciously continue to participate in the system. Here, one could say that we are controlled by it through the building of a mental state of limitation in each of us from birth onwards, whereby we see ourselves in terms of the matrix, every part of it a deception, though possible to deconstruct. In part, we need to stop seeing ourselves in terms of its given concepts, language and labels, as delusional branded limitations we adopt as part of our beings and to which we entrain via the television, the aptly named idiot box, on a daily basis. It is important to remember that all experiences have a quality of entrainment to them, that we are only human and can misconstrue the meaning and hence effect of an experience. Experiences can be beautiful and enchanting, even when one is not aware that its true meaning, its effect, is that of darkening fulfillment. Slowly, people are beginning to awaken and are becoming concerned because they realize that their lifestyle and the lifestyle of those around them is unsustainable and directly contributing to outcomes that they do not endorse. And yet, 
They seem locked into a trajectory in life, pressured to stay the same, pressured to continue similarly by the prior choices of their life, the structure of the civilization they live in. It is very difficult for a lot of people to change what they do on a daily basis if they have an environment that is basically telling them to do the opposite. Most people, I think, believe that a whole lot of their life is predetermined and is not subject to change and doesn't have to be considered. This is just how it is and we should get used to it. And yet it turns out that a lot of those things that most people seek and believe are predetermined just don't make them fulfilled, maybe comfortable and entertained. A lot of the creations and behaviors we have now are superficial replacements for the more fulfilling experience of community. We may, to some degree, feel as if our needs are getting met through them, but in actual fact, our psychophysiology recognizes that the essential components of physical connection and personal integration are missing. You can connect with people as much as you want over online social networks and through commerce, but you aren't going to derive, and we know this scientifically, the same hormonal psychophysiological benefits as if that connection was heartfelt and physical. In modern society, we have a lot of illusions around our environment and our behavior. Many people believe that their behavior is separate, uninfluenced by their environment. Yet, the truth of the matter is that our behavior influences the environment just as the environment influences our behavior. One of the dangers as human beings is that we tend to fall into patterns of behavior that we endlessly repeat. And we live our lives and reconstruct our environment very often differently than what we claim we are doing. But in practice, we are just playing out the same limiting patterns and adapting to our limiting environmental constructions over and over again. When choices are driven into habit, it's almost as if there is choice no longer, but programmed replay. Instead of pausing to compose our thoughts, resolve our awareness, and take the decision, there is repetition without inquiry. Nothing in community or in any specification proposing action along the lines of this direction should be taken without repeat questioning and testing, as well as comprehensive reasoning and evidential explanation. The larger systems of thought and organizations that we participate in, though may be ignorant of, have a dramatic and consequential effect on our lives. In modern society, we think we make our decisions consciously. Instead, much of our decisioning that we think is conscious is being made by contextual environmental manipulation that we are not thinking about and may not even be aware of. And so, we fail to criticize, in other words, critically explore, systems and institutions that enrich some while impoverishing the health and opportunities of others. Such criticisms are often looked at as negative and unhelpful, which of course they are unhelpful to the continuation of pre-existing power structures. And yet, all of that is completely within our power to change when we begin participating in the critical and constructive redesign of a model representative of community. We must orient toward massively open collaboration and world-centric values, representative of our human potential. We must encode these understandings and values into our design processes and material creations through a commonly fulfilling and unified information model. In modern society, narratives such as those of conspiracy and of evil taking over people's minds, turning them into quote-unquote bad guys or bad actors, is actually comforting in comparison to the idea that maybe there really is nobody in charge, that we have created structures, including systems of governance and production, which run on their own, in spite of the moral inclinations and best of intentions of their participants. Perhaps the problem isn't that we are being ruled by sociopathic monsters, but rather by people who are just as susceptible to structural social and economic forces, institutional and peer pressures, and simplistic narratives as the rest of us. For the most part, people in modern society believe that it is your choice to do what you want with your own time. But that choice exists within a larger socioeconomic context that many people don't even realize exists. And yet, it shapes their choices, the options between which they may choose on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. One of the likely reasons for this lack of awareness is the fact that resources therein are hidden under the control of governments and corporations, which obscures visibility and hence creates a culture where the average person can't perceive the relationship between their actions and the socioeconomic, ecological effects of their actions. Hence, people in modern society, due to a lack of visibility, generally go about their affairs and make socioeconomic plans in complete disregard of others 
and of the ecology. Maybe they purchase some land, a house, they settle into a town or neighborhood, they have become comfortable in their own limited way, and are no longer interested in anything different. That is, until the next market or state shockwave comes through. Sometimes we don't see the cage we have surrounded ourselves with. We become desensitized to our environment, to our own suffering, and to the suffering of others. But we can change that. Previously, there was no other specifically defined and meaningful choice that could be shared and duplicated en masse. Now, as the human population, we have an open, free, and living specification available on Oravana.com that provides a structural operating framework for living in intentional fulfillment. How does someone break out of those patterns that are unhelpful but seem deeply entrenched and into a set of more fulfilling relationships when the environment inhibits and de-incentivizes their formation? This is where the redesign of our socioeconomic system and surrounding materializations becomes a paramount consideration. We must start asking some very significant questions about how we might optimize our cities and our lives and the hard infrastructure of our environment. Begin to notice that a lot of the systems we have been normalized to in modern society and take as a given exist to perpetuate themselves without regard for our fulfillment. Behaviors that are fundamentally unfulfilling seem normal due to our habitual entrainment to a reduced state of being. We need to make some tough choices around how we move, how we live, and how we build. What are the priorities, and what is a truly beneficial focus? These are large and complex decisions that will ultimately have a structurally reorienting effect on our lives. Wouldn't it be useful to orient that structure effectively toward everyone's fulfillment? Among community, we specify a unified information model that is tested through living, in other words, through experience, and it intentionally evolves for the benefit of all of us as we gather more experience. As humans, it is our psychophysiological experience that there is perpetual suffering when there is socioeconomic stratification, and desensitization therein is very real. Socioeconomic inequality is the greatest public health issue on Earth. It could be said that we are allergic to such conditions. It's not just our culture, it is built into us as human beings. We don't want to see stratification. We don't like that feeling. We might in that nasty way, because that is what culture has done to us, gravitate toward elevation to feel like we have done something over the capacity of others, but at a root level, we strive for equality in socioeconomic access to that which is fulfilling. Herein, justice, as the sufficient fulfillment of all, is what we naturally gravitate toward. The media in modern society doesn't make the fact clear enough that poverty and inequality is the most powerful economic precondition for disease, violence, and social disorder. Anyone that says that class stratification is somehow a motivator, or that those with less should aspire to a different level, and it is because they aren't motivated or hardworking enough that they have less than others, is simply wrong, and doesn't understand the structural causality present in the experience. When we don't critically explore socioeconomic structures, we are likely to regenerate social dominance and unenlightened, unaware self-interest. To overcome structural failings, we must begin to collaborate, to share knowledge and efforts freely, so that we can begin building this new living environment together, which is the only condition under which it can be built. It is through the continuous experience of togetherness that community is reconstructed. In this sense, one could call this direction and the project we are working on an experimental approach to living differently. With the recognition that the socioeconomic system we now have in modern society is also an experimental approach to living. In fact, we have learned a lot about ourselves and the ecological tolerances of the planet over the last several millennia, though particularly in the modern era, and with the knowledge we have acquired, it only seems reasonable that we can do better. We can live better for ourselves, and we can be better stewards. We can live with greater well-being while concurrently existing in regenerative harmony with the earth as that which gives us all life and is fundamentally the life ground of all of our beings while we are here. For those working toward this direction of mutual fulfillment and ecological stability, it is important to recognize that on the road to community, there are a lot of persons who have appointed themselves or been appointed by a disconnected society to defend the past. For many people today in modern society, the idea of community scaled up to the level of our global socioeconomic system is clearly seen as challenging the status quo. 
but that is how we make progress. In order to understand what we are proposing, someone must be willing to step out of their preconditioned paradigm, which involves a willingness to see and explore beyond their own current limitations. Not everyone is ready and willing to do this. Not everyone is willing to ask better questions of others and of themselves and their self-identity. Certainly today, seeing the bigger picture and the structures in which they participate with more clarity can be challenging, and at first, maybe even a little daunting and scary. We all desire prosperity, and it is unfortunate that some of us have yet to realize that we could all prosper beyond our wildest imaginations if we were to simply restructure our thinking and our socioeconomic systems. In part, the dismissal of a structural reorientation may be due to having a very confused, or possibly no, internal visualization of the operation of things and how life could be different. Emotions and experiences just pop out of nowhere, and people in modern society have, to their detriment, become comfortable with that. So much so that they have forgotten that there is a patterning and unifying experience common to all of us. Instead of structural change, they often suggest the equivalent of patchwork. We must stop patchworking, applying small fixes to a broken system. Patchworking cannot solve the real, underlying structural problems. When a system, like the one active in modern society, has systemic problems, patchworking any one part, even with the best of intentions, is not only not a solution, but it can cause unintended harm elsewhere in the system. Continuing to participate in a broken structure is taking away opportunities for greater fulfillment. We must start looking at root causes and the network of relationships that are woven outward therefrom. We must stop breaking our natural cycles and then asking, what can I apply on top of the break to make me feel a little more comfortable? The patchwork and surface level solutions put out there by those desiring a conscious reorientation of the same fundamentally broken underlying structure simply do not go far enough. Humankind is a problem solving, problem creating entity. It would be wise to create less visceral problems and start solving for real problems in our systematic and universal fulfillment through structural redesign. Unfortunately, modern society generates people who need problems in order to derive an income or who create drama in order to conceal the fact that they have little purpose or meaning in their life. To a large extent, the very livelihood of many people in modern society is dependent upon how much they contribute to a broken, planetary and life-harming structure, and even fewer of them are needed as contributors each year due to encroaching automation and the resulting technological unemployment. And yet, powerful social and technological changes mean that we can realistically commit to the aspiration that everyone be able to live a fulfilled life of meaning and creativity. A life where we have the structural opportunities to express ourselves as individuals with access to our self-determined power and the resources needed to shape our future toward one of greater flourishing for all beings on this planet. We have to let go of the anchors of our past if we are going to move into the future gracefully and with fulfillment. We have to learn how to expect change and move into the future without pain. Part of the problem here of course, is that the education system in modern society spends a lot of time studying the past and very little time studying probable futures. We have to begin imagining what could be instead of redrafting pieces of paper with anachronistic definitions and declarations. A population without a vision of what the future can be is bound to repeat past errors, just as a population without a memory of its past is bound to lose awareness of action-consequence pairing. The decisions of our past are the architects of our present, and if we don't understand the model applied to our living system and to decisions we are taking, then our present experience is unlikely to be decidedly fulfilling. Clearly, there are a lot of problems in the world, and we need to prioritize our actions and structure our thinking so that we combine our efforts into a solution or series of solutions that benefit us all and that we can all say we deeply appreciate. Today, we can re-architect cities at a rate that was unimaginable 40 or 100 years ago. Humanity is in an age of unprecedented technological breakthrough and previously unimagined potential for evolutionary progress. Here, science involves discovery into our existent reality, and those discoveries lead to technologies that allow us to engineer and otherwise alter structure within reality. 
Effectively, through the continuous discovery of knowledge and technological development, we are entering an increasingly thought-responsive environment. In other words, we can use technology to increase the speed at which our thoughts manifest. For example, I can 3D model something on my PC and then 3D print it, which represents an increase in the thought responsiveness of the environment over the use of modeling with a material like clay or the requirement of retooling a machine. However, arriving at technologies that allow the rapid thought responsive transformation of our environment in an unplanned way is not wise. Today, there are things that a few people can do with technology that risk the lives of many, such as feeding antibiotics to farm animals en masse or developing and deploying biological weapons. As a human population, we can more rapidly than ever before manifest all manner of suffering and pathology, or we can change the fundamental structure of the way we live life on this planet and rapidly manifest well-being and fulfillment for all. All the marvels and wonders of technology amount to nothing unless they elevate humans to their highest potential. Today, most people I meet in modern society do not consider the necessity of restructuring the socioeconomic system into which rapid thought-responsive technologies are being integrated. If these technologies are placed onto modern society's present socioeconomic platform, then the next phase of experience for us on Earth may not be so pleasant. Hence, I see the urgency in designing a new system to make the existing system obsolete. As human beings acquire more and more power to reconfigure their environment, they will create a future that is either more fulfilling for all, because that is the socioeconomic orientation, or they will create more suffering and confusion for all, because property, labor for income, profit, competition, and power over others are the socioeconomic orientation. Engineered creations will take on the biases and standards, the directives of the socioeconomic system in which they have been designed and will be utilized. Technologies created and applied in a capitalist system will have a capitalist bias. Alternatively, technologies created and applied in community will maintain standards that orient us all toward greater fulfillment and clarity of perception. When we perceive technologies taking us in dangerous directions, Consider that maybe it is really our way of life and our lifestyle that is taking us in a dangerous direction. We are just using technologies in ways that we couldn't before, because technology is allowing us to do more of what we are already doing, and that is where the danger lies. In the market state, often people cringe and fear technologies that allow us to rapidly re-engineer our environment. They ignore or otherwise don't recognize that it is the socioeconomic context to which their attention should be critically and inquisitively drawn. Instead, they argue and debate the technology and ignore the larger root socioeconomic context in which the technology was developed and will be deployed. Unfortunately, and as we have already mentioned, most people in modern society have little awareness of the socioeconomic context that shapes their lives, their mentalities, and the technologies they're in. And so, their only recourse is to run to authority figures who have little technical understanding themselves and will use force and violence as part of their solution. It is wise to remember that, in general, authority figures have three options when it comes to handling new technologies. They can suppress them, ignore them, and weaponize them. Nevertheless, there are people in positions of authority and power in modern society who understand that the world is changing, and they too desire to facilitate responsible change. The question is, can you live with yourself knowing what is possible, seeing the problems in the world, and not trying to change it for the betterment of all? We get what we tolerate. Herein, it matters not only whether you do something, but how you do something. When our thoughts restructure the world around us more quickly, we must act with more intelligence and be more careful in our thoughts. Maybe I can have the sort of life I really want, while, not if, but while, I share a little more access with others. It is the thought that I'm not diluted and I am not less when I cooperate and share in our fulfillment. When life is fulfilling, then we don't seek to fill our minds with superficial stuff and our environments with weighty junk. For those working on this direction, it may be useful to ask, how do we help reignite the flame of inquiry and self-discovery in people who have become emotionally wrapped up in their material acquisitions 
and financial enterprises. As an early start, we must inquire into what people really want in life. Essentially, they want access to that which is fulfilling when they want it. And when people get a taste of that sort of society, akin to community, then they will no longer pile junk within and around themselves as a buffer between their perceived identity and the pain of disconnection. Instead, they will recycle creations and update their expressions, make them better, and think them through. Take the same materials used in an out-of-date system and recompose them into one that is updated and updatable and serves our common fulfillment. The structures around us aren't just things thrown on the wall. We choose to put them there, or have inherited them, and they are reflections of us. Here, it is useful to consider our lives in terms of our choices, the events that take place, and the probabilities for consequential outcomes. We become shaped by our society and the structures with which we participate, and we ought to think critically about who and what they serve and our intentional continuance of them. It is when we develop a sensitivity for the complexity as well as the simplicity of life that we truly become rich in our experience of community. The living system that most people experience in modern society creates a type of lifestyle that is very separating. It forms a specific set of relationships that produce a number of conditions that make disintegration within ourselves and disconnection from others likely. And those people living in a state of disconnection and disintegration are likely to create environmental constructions that suck energy and inhibit the free flow of energy rather than build and restore energy systems. Still, some people find it difficult to understand that the old fixes do not work. The system of thought that perpetuates that which we do not want in our lives must be stepped outside of and observed for what it creates. And this is done by taking pause and breathing to reflect upon one source of life, which is eventually realized to be the point of origin of all of us together. And from this realization, we may return to our creations in this reality with more knowledge, intelligence, and potential than before. Subscribe to one of the Oravana Project's information feeds, like Twitter or our RSS feed, for we have more upcoming media releases in this series on community. And finally, you can find the transcript for this media release on our website, oravana.com.